This Week in Nerf, it's all about Toy Fair and the surprises we had coming out of it. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. So Toy Fair was over the weekend, over the past weekend, and somewhat throughout this past week as well. And there were a number of things that I did not anticipate, and I'm sure plenty of other people weren't anticipating seeing or learning about uh, through this event. So let's go ahead and jump right on into those. First up is actually, let's go with something that we knew the name of, and we had some theories on, but we hadn't seen it in person until this weekend. And this is the Delta Trooper. Uh, we thought maybe this was going to be an Alpha Trooper kind of update, maybe a, a slight change, uh, but this is actually looking more and more like a Slam Fire Retaliator. It has that top prime, but it does have a Slam Fire function and the front barrel and back stock do come off. I like the way this blaster looks and it's gonna retail for $30, which, that's not too bad. That's not too bad for what this is. And I, I I hope that we get some cool looking pump grip kits from the third party makers. I would love to see a Gavin Fuzzy option from this uh, or for this that kind of matches the aesthetic because it has a cool look to it. I definitely like the way this shell looks. I just don't know how hard of a process it's process it's process it's going to be to make a pump grip for a kit that doesn't have that barrel. Uh, the kind of rail down here, and I know that's about a dozen of you that are going to mess with me. Eh, eh, it'll stay for about five minutes. All right. But that's the Delta Trooper. I I like it. I think it's cool looking. I think it's going to be a great blaster for people getting into the hobby or entry level type stuff that people can drop a spring in, hopefully add a pump kit to, and they've got themselves a nice, decent, you know, super stock springer. So I'm a fan of this one. I think good job on this one, Hasbro. Now, the next thing from Hasbro is actually something from Busby as well, and these are two different chrono barrels. So both Hasbro and Busby had the same idea or decided to bring the same idea to market at the same time, and both of these will retail for $15. Now, these will attach or should attach to the front of your blasters, and you shoot through them as you're shooting. It will tell you how fast your darts are going, both in feet per second and meters per second. So... It was looking like uh, these are not going to go above 100 feet per second based on the digits that we saw, but we haven't been able to test with a higher velocity blaster to really confirm that speculation. But what we do know is since they will use meters per second as an option, uh, we can switch to that and you test blasters up to 300 FPS. I mean, you just times the number by three and then essentially you've got yourself your uh, FPS reading. And I mean, that's not perfect, but... Uh, that said, I do like that the uh, Hasbro version has an ammo counter as well. And I think that's just a nice little touch, something a little extra, maybe a reason to buy their offering over the Busby offering. Uh, but it's definitely nice that they're attempting to do things like this. They're kind of more reaching out more towards the modding community uh, because what's really the point of having this for standard blasters because most of them perform the same anyways so they're not really going to see that much of a difference if kids are using these with all their stock blasters there's not going to be that big of a difference they're not going to see much of it this is definitely a nod towards the modding community which i appreciate and i'm sure plenty of other people appreciate having a, an affordable option as well once those come out well i'm sure we'll see plenty of tests to see how accurate they are compared to the chronographs we currently use uh, but still I like that they're trying to do some outreach, I assume, to this aspect and this side of the community. But moving on, something I'm looking forward to is we found out the Microshot Series 2 blasters. Uh, I definitely dug the Microshot Series 1, and we saw in an image uh, over the weekend the rough cut that was all chibified and squished down as a Microshot, and I love it. Um, but we also know the other two now, and the other two are going to be the Strife and the Zombie Strike Crossfire. The Crossfire, eh, you know, I'm kind of whatever on, but the Strife, oh, oh, that's going to be a fun one. I'm definitely going to pick up the Rough Cut and the Strife ones. Uh, these are awesome. I love, again, that Hasbro is doing this line and giving kind of a collector's type thing for people to mess with and collect and have that aren't super expensive. I found these at Target for like six bucks, seven bucks, something like that, which is even lower than the online price. So uh, you can definitely find these for an affordable price, which I am definitely a fan of. And looking forward to Series 2 and hoping to continue this 
uh, as we go each year. Now, moving on from Hasbro proper, well, actually, no, I'm sorry, there is one more, one more proper Hasbro thing to talk about, and that's the Rival Stormtrooper Blaster. Uh, this is something that just a, a picture was shared, and we got a little more information as the weekend went on, but whoo, this is, this is a sweet, sweet looking blaster. I am so into the way this Rival Blaster looks. It's like they nailed that Stormtrooper aesthetic. It looks sweet. The size seems right. My only issue is I saw it first. It's like, oh, a pump, pump action. Oh my, it's going to use the pump grip. Yes. Oh, it's going to be amazing. And then we saw the other side and it's a Helios. Uh, so it has the priming bar on the opposite side or the left side. Which, I mean, it's not too surprising, and it doesn't make it a horrible blaster. It just, it just makes me a little sad, because I was super, super looking forward to a pump action, like, official Hasbro release, and would have paid a decent amount for this one, because we know it's, it's since it's Star Wars, and it's geared towards a collector's audience, as you can see it has that open-up display case or box and whatnot, so it's definitely going to carry a bit more of a premium price uh, we'd, I don't know what the price is yet. If I missed that, please someone let me know. But, I mean, this is going to be a solid blaster. It's super cool looking. People are going to buy it, whether to collect or use. It's awesome looking. It's just that that small little little tin twinge of disappointment when I, know, when I found out it was not actually a pump-action blaster. But, it's a solid blaster, and the priming bar on it actually looks fairly nice, so it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, definitely something to keep your eyes out for. I know I may have to pick one up just because of how cool it's, it looks. It is super, super nice looking, and the packaging is awesome too. Now moving from Hasbro to one of their licensing companies, Jazzwares. Uh, Jazzware accessories actually, um, they're, they're producing a whole bunch of lines for Hasbro in terms of, of like tactical gear, a whole bunch of stuff, uh, targets, and then the thing that was most, inter most interesting to me was inflatable cover, several different types. So we've got like these blocks apparently that are going to stick and stack on top of each other through Velcro and they're inflatable and they're like maybe three-ish feet tall and wide and so you can kind of stack and build and create your own cover and they have even bigger and wider uh, singular pieces of cover that you can inflate and use that have a more like camo look or, or have like netting and stuff on them. Now we don't have any pictures of this stuff, but I'm going off of Foam From Above's blog post where he was in one of these parties where they were showing off stuff, but they weren't allowed to take pictures. So it's all word of mouth right now until we have the official images and release information and stuff like that. But still, very interesting, very cool. Something else to add to the line, like you've got the battle bunkers and stuff like that that have been doing these kinds of things for a year or two now. And uh, I, I dig that Hasbro's kind of cluing in and reaching out to try and kind of create their own versions of things and try and give more options and more variety out there for these things for kids and if they find a use for some of our games then great i wouldn't be surprised if they don't because they may not be the most sturdy but they're probably going to be great for kids um so that's something definitely to keep your eye out for i'm very curious to see what those look like and how they will hold up during games uh, let's move on to one last thing from Busby, actually, and this is the Abraham's Demolisher. Uh, this is a super interesting blaster. It's a full auto mag fed flywheel blaster. It looks like a Gatling gun, especially the way you hold it and you'd think the turret would be the way that the darts are held. But no, it, it's mag fed, and that is definitely interesting. Um, the way it fires is even more interesting, though. It doesn't actually use a trigger to fire, you pull back on the handle with the rev trigger on it, which is interesting. You don't need to like make a pumping motion, but you just pull back and then it starts revving and or starts firing after you hold down the trigger to rev. And it's a unique and interesting design choice. Whether or not people will like it, I don't know. I'm guessing the initial reaction is gonna be negative to it because of the lack of a trigger, but kids may like it. Uh, this may be one of those great blasters for that younger target demographic which uh, I'll be curious to see. And I'll be curious to see what people do mod-wise in terms of this, because it's it could be a neat shell. It definitely has a different look to it than a lot of the stuff we currently have. So people may try and make something work with it or integrate a handle with a trigger and, 
and kind of try things that way. So regardless, I thought it was interesting and worth sharing. That's going to be $30 as well. Um, a link to, uh, I'm going to have a link to videos, uh, like a playlist if he has it up from Drac, who got to hands-on with all these blasters. Uh, so if you want to see how they perform hands-on, check those out if you haven't already watched them. But I just want to let you know that there are videos out there of these being used. So that's definitely a plus if you want to get an idea of how these will function. All of the new stuff from Hasbro that we've talked about in the past that was leaked and talked about with the images, that was all on show at... Um, at Toy Fair. So those videos are up from other people. I was not able to go. I would love to be able to go in the future. Maybe in, in following years, I'll be able to be there and give you firsthand coverage. That would be amazing and I would love it, but not this year. We'll just have to wait and see uh, how things shake out. Let's move on though to the mod of the week. And this is one I dig. We, st we had that video game theme last week. So let's stick with that video game theme. This is from Valor Lionheart, and this is the Doom Slayer Turbo Advance. This is a sweet Doom-inspired blaster. Oh my goodness. The shell looks fantastic for this paint job. And there's just little details, like the fact that he took the time to try and match the three different shades of green on the Doom armor, and, and just, oh, it looks so good. It's so balanced and so nice looking, and the details are there. It, I love the way this blaster came out. He has a video up on it, actually. I'm going to go ahead and link to that video as well as the Reddit post down below. Go check that out. It's worth it. It's a really, really cool looking paint job and aesthetic job. Uh, just, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I love, I love this guy's work. It's always fantastic. And this is a prime example of that. Now for the video of the week. It's been a while since we talked about a caliber, and I think. It feels like it's been a little while. So why don't we fix that? This is a video from Remzak Nerf, and he took the time to go ahead and do a K14 caliber. And so this is a beefy, beefy spring. I believe it's either the K26 or the K25 spring fits inside the K14 spring. This is a monster spring, and uh, apparently he may, he's been getting some pretty big numbers. He had to adjust the barrel length of the caliber, but he's actually printed out and he is selling the adjusted files uh, or adjusted printed pieces to make this blaster work with a K14. I believe it's three or four pieces after watching the video, and uh, it's actually less work than I anticipated, which was really cool to see. Uh, it does put some extra stress on the blaster, so you may have to uh, reinforce or print higher infill or, or things like that, but this is really cool. I love that he took the time to try and do this and, and you know, try, just try and innovate and push things a little bit further with a platform that people love right now. So this is really cool, and I definitely, definitely suggest taking a look at it and heading over to a shop if it's something you're interested in. But if you want to watch that video, it's right over here. Give that a click. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. Every Saturday morning, we do Nerf news, and we do gameplay videos, reviews, all that kind of stuff as well here. I'd love to have you be part of this community. Um, as always... Let me know what you think in the comments of everything. Just want to make sure I get that out there because I love hearing from all of you. And if you have ideas for videos of the week, please let me know as well. I definitely am always searching for new and creative and talented video makers in the community. So let me know what you think videos should be, video of the week, down below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.